After graduating from the Glasgow and Edinburgh Medical College for Women in 1913, and after being a ward physician on the Royal Army Medical Corps in Malta and Greece, Mary Broadfoot Walker worked as a poor law service, providing medical help for the poorest in Scotland from 1920 to 1936. During this time, despite being in a hospital where research wasn't well supported, she became a pioneer in the treatment of myasthenia gravis, demonstrating that the subcutaneous injection of prostigmin caused a temporary improvement in strength in the patient. In particular, Walker postulated that the temporary effect, such as an improvement in swallowing, could help a patient during a respiratory crisis. On the 8th of February 1935, Walker presented a patient with MG to the Royal Society of Medicine, whose response to the treatment of prostigmin was so dramatic that those present questioned whether the patient had a neurological disorder in the first place. For her thesis, a contribution to the study of myasthenia gravis, she received an MD thesis gold medal from the University of Edinburgh. From 1952 to 1977, Dr. John Crofton was Chair of Respiratory Diseases at the University of Edinburgh. Whilst there, he discovered the Edinburgh Method, a multi-drug therapy to combat tuberculosis. Having become interested in TB when working under Guy Scadding during the Second World War, during which time he became involved in the first controlled trial of streptomycin, Edinburgh posed a challenge. As the rest of Europe's control of tuberculosis improved, Scotland's remained dire, with a thousand new cases of TB in Edinburgh, population half a million, in 1954. After discovering that even the combination of two drugs, streptomycin and para-aminosalicylic acid, led to resistance, he and his team used a combination of three. The aforementioned drugs, in combination with the new drug, isoniazid, the therapy cured almost everyone, leading to widespread disbelief and accusations of Croston's team falsifying data. It was only after a clinical trial in 23 countries that the method was finally accepted. Revolutionising the worldwide treatment of TV, he helped to write the WHO's Guide for TV Treatment. <laughs>